Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> Here in the sanctuary and people who are worshiping at home through Facebook, glad to, well, I can't say glad to see you, but I know there are lots of people worshiping through Facebook. Uh, I'm glad to know you are there. We are worshiping this morning. This is uh, Sunday morning, course of Sunday morning, and this morning we are thinking about God's kingdom that has power and it grows. And it's a, a fascinating thought. I know it will be, and I hope you do, I, I ask you to be in prayer as we worship this morning. And we try to put everything else aside and behind and wherever it needs to go. And let's just uh, focus on, on worshiping to God uh, together. Now, we have done once, a couple of Sundays before, we have, we, have tried, uh, we have asked you to sign the little greeting cards to be sent to people that we have missed since COVID-19. I know this is a big thing nationwide and worldwide, uh, and we are dealing with a few people we really haven't seen since COVID-19 started, and this is now about three years or so ago. So there will be uh, at least three more cards. We have sent six cards out, and there is going to be three more. And we have titled these cards, We Are Not the Same Without You, and two exclamation marks. Instead of putting these around, circulating in the middle of service, uh, you need more time. So we are going to do it right in the beginning of this service. Please sign each card. Put your name uh, there and let people know that, yeah, you are with this message. I am not the same without you. Please do that, and I am putting this forward. And um, Brad, you put your name and your wife, the second one. So uh, we get good start for this service. So let's pray together. Let's pray together. Courtney Cole is going to have an announcement after this greeting, but uh, let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, we have come together this gorgeous Sunday morning, sunny Sunday morning to worship you, to let you know how much we love you, and to receive this message from you, Lord, how much you love us. Oh, Lord, we want to see your kingdom grow within us. We want to grow, we want to see your kingdom grow big and powerful as it is, beginning from something so very little as mustard seed, growing to be big, steady and strong and powerful. Come, Holy Spirit, come upon this worshiping community. Come upon people who are worshiping at home and people who will join us later through YouTube. Come upon us, Lord. Help us to see you. Help us to hear your voice. Help us to get excited about your kingdom and Jesus, Lord, about you. It is in your name we pray. Amen. Good morning. I have two announcements. The first announcement is, um, and you received this via email, that Sunshine Friends is ordering new shirts for the school year. Um, the shirts feature our new design that was designed by Miss Chelsea, so you would have a mint t-shirt. We're only doing a short sleeve option right now. Um, but if you're interested in signing up for a Sunshine Friends shirt, this is a slight fundraiser for the school. Feel free to sign up using this paper form if you've not used the virtual form that was sent out and you would like a shirt. Um, the second thing I'd like to invite you all to is um, the Pregnancy Help Center Night for Life. So I'm not sure if many of you are aware, but I actually work for the Pregnancy Help Center. Um, so the Pregnancy Help Center is all free services. We do pregnancy testing, free ultrasounds, post-abortive counseling, so helping women that have chose abortion be reconnected with God, um, find forgiveness, find hope and healing. And then we offer parenting classes for expecting families all the way through the child's age of two, and so parents can earn free new baby gear for their baby through those classes. So the Night for Life is coming up. It's on September 28th. This is a completely free event. It's at EKU Center for the Arts. So you can just come to this event. It's got heavy, ap heavy appetizers. Mark Schultz, a famous Christian recording artist, 
He's going to be speaking at the event. He was an adopted child and then has now adopted children as well. So he's going to be talking about the importance of choosing life and the importance of supporting families. Um, so I just wanted to extend this invite to you all. Like I said, it is completely free, but there will be an opportunity to financially support the Pregnancy Help Center and their ministry. Um, so if you'd like more information about that, feel free to just see me or send me a text. Um, or you can find this ad online, and you can just scan this QR code to get your free ticket just to reserve your spot. Thank you. I'd like to invite you all to worship together as we begin our Sunday morning singing time with the song, Victory in Jesus. Please stand and sing together.
one in the back likes that song. Let us continue our time of worship as we sing about our Savior, the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star. And if you want the music with this, it's in our black little faith. We sing 2062, or it's on the screen. Spirit to come and be present in our worship this morning. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Please turn and greet each other with a sign of Christ's peace. Those of you who are worshiping at home, we extend the peace of Christ to you, knowing that his spirit is present with you as it is with us. Amen. Let us welcome the children's message time by singing Jesus Loves Me. Jesus loves me. 
Ladies, how are you? Good. Good. I have somebody here. Who knows who this Scooby is? Doo. Scooby Doo. Do you know Scooby Fiona? No. no. Well, when I was a kid, and my dad, he actually still does, but when I was a kid, me and my dad would watch Scooby Doo. He really loves it. Yes. And when my girls go over to his house, he still really wants to watch Scooby Doo every time. Yeah. He loves it. So, what does Scooby Doo do? What's he do? Afraid. He gets afraid. He eats a lot of Scooby snacks. And what else? Do you know? Yeah. He looks to figure out mysteries, right? What is a mystery? Like something he doesn't know, then he out. Yeah, a mystery might be something you don't know, right? You might be looking for clues. You might be trying to figure something out. That's what a mystery is. Yes, Fiona? <laughs> Oh, right. So he's trying to figure out mystery, something that's going wrong. He's trying to figure out maybe who did it or what's going on, right? Well, sometimes it might feel like what God is doing is a mystery, right? Like if we have little seeds like this. Hold on. If we have little seeds like this and you look in there, if you planted them, right, and you watered them and gave them sunlight, they would probably grow, right? Right? That's not too much of a mystery. But it might would be a mystery what day those little seeds were going to sprout. What day they were going to little pop up from the grass, from the dirt. Or it might be a mystery. Thank you. You can tell Micah was here at the early service. Uh, <laughs> you might not know what day this little bloom is going to pop open, right? Or this one or that one. We don't, right. We don't know all of those things, right? Well, sometimes we might feel like that with God. We can't tell what God is doing or we're just waiting, trying to see when God's going to answer our prayer or God's going to help us through a hard situation. It's kind of a mystery. We're having to wait. We might see clues, right? We might feel like God's talking to us. But it's a mystery sometimes to see what God is working on. But what we do know is that even in the mystery, even in the waiting, even when we can't tell exactly what God's doing, we know that he's still working. We know that God is doing and God is moving and God is working through the mystery, through the unknown to us. Nothing is unknown to God. And I think we can find a lot of comfort in that, right? That even when we don't know, God still knows. Yeah. So let's say a prayer and then we'll go to Children's Church with Miss Verlaine, okay? Ready? Dear God, you are so good to us, and you know exactly what we need. You have a plan for us. Help us to remember that even when you feel like a mystery to us, or we don't understand why something is happening in our lives, you have the answers, and you know the plan. Nothing is a mystery to you, God. So please help us to give up control, God, and to trust in your goodness and your faithfulness and your plan, God. Thank you for all the children all over the world. Amen. Good morning. Let us pray the prayer for illumination. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you have to say to us today. Amen. A reading from the book of Psalm. 114, found in your pew Bible on page 756. 
When Israel came out of Egypt, when the house of Jacob came out from a people who spoke a different language, Judah was God's sanctuary. Israel was God's territory. The sea saw it happen and ran away. The Jordan River retreated. The mountains leaped away like rams. The hills leaped away like lambs. See, why did you run away? Jordan, why did you retreat? Mountains, why did you leap away like rams? Hills, why did you leap away like lambs? Earth, tremble before the Lord. Tremble before the God of Jacob, the one who turned that rock into a pool of water, that flint stone into a spring of water. A reading from the book of Exodus, chapter 14, verses 19 through 31, found in your pew Bible on page 83. God's messenger, who had been in front of Israel's camp, moved and went behind them. The column of cloud moved from the front and took its place behind them. It stood between Egypt's camp and Israel's camp. The cloud remained there, and when darkness fell, it lit up the night. They didn't come near each other all night. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. The Lord pushed the sea back by a strong east wind all night, turning the sea into dry land. The waters were split into two. The Israelites walked into the sea on dry ground. The waters formed a wall for them on their right hand and on their left. The Egyptians chased them and went into the sea after them, all of Pharaoh's horses, chariots, and cavalry. As morning approached, the Lord looked down on the Egyptian camp from the column of lightning and cloud and threw the Egyptian camp into a panic. The Lord jammed their chariot wheels so that they wouldn't turn easily. The Egyptians said, let's get away from the Israelites because the Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea so that the water comes back and covers the Egyptians, their chariots, and their cavalry. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. At daybreak, the sea returned to its normal depth. The Egyptians were driving toward it, and the Lord tossed the Egyptians into the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots and the cavalry, Pharaoh's entire army that had followed them into the sea. Not one of them remained. The Israelites, however, walked on dry ground through the sea. The waters formed a wall for them on their right hand and on their left. The Lord rescued Israel from the Egyptians that day. Israel saw the Egyptians dead on this seashore. Israel saw the amazing power of the Lord against the Egyptians. The people were in awe of the Lord, and they believed in the Lord and in his servant Moses. A reading from the book of Romans, chapter 14, verses 8 through 12, found in your pew Bible on page 1383. If we live, we live for the Lord, and if we die, we die for the Lord. Therefore, whether we live or die, we belong to God. This is why Christ died and lived, so that we might be Lord of both the dead and the living. But why do you judge your brother or sister? Or why do you look down on your brother or sister? We all will stand in front of the judgment seat of God, because it is written, As I live, says the Lord, every knee will bow to me, and every tongue will give praise to God. So then each of us will give an account of ourselves to God. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. The Gospel reading is from the book of Matthew, chapter 13, verses 31 and 32, found in your pew Bible on page 1187. He told another parable to them. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and planted in his field. It's the smallest of all seeds, but when it's grown, it's the largest of all vegetable plants. It becomes a tree so that the birds in the sky come 
and nest in its branches. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Here. Can you, oh, there, there we go. There we go. How is everybody? Um, the name of this song is called Scars in Heaven. It kind of could throw certain people off, um, but really the honest meaning, Scars in Heaven, the song is about there's only one person with scars in heaven, and that's our, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So, uh, I was also, also thinking about what happened on 9-11, just a week, you know, about a week ago, and it really tears me up when I think about people that Got, went, got up, got to work, going about their business, doing their everyday thing, and then they're gone. And it leaves other people here wondering, you know, where they are. Or, you know, I hope they're in heaven. So anyway, this song pretty much plays on that kind of thing. Um... It's a really pretty song, so I hope I can do it justice. I just learned it. If I'd only known the last time would be the last time, I would have put off all the things I had to do. I would have stayed a little longer Hold on a little tighter Now what I'd give for one more day with you Cause there's a wound inside my heart Where something's missing And they tell me that it's gonna heal with time But now you're in a place Where all your wounds have been erased and knowing yours are healed, are healing mine. The only stars in heaven that won't belong to me and you. There'll be no such thing as broken. And all the old will be made new. And the thought that makes me smile now. Even as the tears fall down Is the only scars in heaven Are on the hands that hold you now I know the road you walked was anything but easy You picked up your share of scars along the way and now you're in a place where the tears are on your face and no end years are here are wasting my time. The only scars in heaven won't belong to you and me. No such thing is broken And all the old will be made new And something makes me smile now Even as the tears fall down 
that the only scars in heaven are the hands that hold you now. Hallelujah. 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 From the hands that hold you now. There's not a day that I don't go by that I don't see you. You live on in all the better parts of me. Until I'm standing with you in the sun, I'll fight this fight and this race I'll run until I finally see what you can see. Oh, the only scars in heaven they won't belong to me and you. There'll be no such thing as broken. And all the old will be made new. And the thought that makes me smile now. Even as the tears flow down. That the only scars in heaven. hands that hold you now Beautiful job, Brad. Good job. I was looking at where the other boys come if, if there's somebody behind his back, but I'll figure it out. <laughs> I'll figure it out. Technology, am I right? One thing is true, God's work will go on. And there is something we can do about it to speed it up, maybe. But there's really nothing we can do about it to hinder it. Sometimes we believe that might be the case, but no, God's work will go on. I would like for us to, uh, to, to, to hear, not that we have wonderful uh, scripture reading this morning already, and we don't have to reread it for any reason, but for us to really think about what Jesus says in the gospel, in the gospel of Matthew. When the, Matthew said in another parable, he put forth to, uh, to them who listen, as we listen to him this morning. And here's what Jesus says, the kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed. So, <clears throat> Jesus, Jesus says that the kingdom of God is, is like a mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in his field. I have never seen a mustard seed. How many of you have seen a mustard seed? I don't know uh, how small it is. Uh, in the first service, as I preached after service, David Taylor gave me a presentation about mustard seed. Obviously, he's a gardener too. And he believed that the black one is even smaller than the, uh, than the ordinary mustard seed, you may say. But it is small. Why I know it? Jesus says it is the least of, of all the seeds. So I don't know how little and tiny it is, but if, 
if the creator, creator of the universe says that it is the least of all, all the seeds, it must be pretty small, am I right? And that is enough information, obviously, for us to try to think about what he means. But then he says, but when it's, it is grown, it is greater than, greater than the herbs and becomes a tree. So it will grow big. It will be bigger than, than the herbs are. And as a matter of fact, it becomes a tree. So as big that the, so that birds of the air come and nest in its branches. What does this mean to us this morning as we try to think about and to understand what growth is? And can we really understand the mystery of growth? That's the question we are asking very first. Can we really understand the mystery of growth? Now the answer is no, we can't. Many times we see that I saw the wind blowing. It was bad. Well, what you really mean that you didn't really see the wind, but you saw some effects of the wind. If you place your chair in front of the tree and you start spending hours time before the tree that is close by to your house and your neighbor stop by and see us, what are you doing? And your answer would be that I am watching the tree to grow. Don't, don't, don't be surprised if they start calling help for you. <laughs> and they should. Especially if you spend their hours and days watching your tree grow. Or your flowers even. You can't do that. Now you know they grow. Same thing with your children or grandchildren. Now if you had one or two or three or four children a few years ago, and today they're out of nest. What in the world has happened? They grew. Or the tree you planted this spring or a couple of springs ago, and you see it grow, but you can really say that I see, all the t I, all, I see it growing all the time. That's a mystery. I can call myself a, a, a a poet or anything like that. Occasionally I may pick up the book and read something that is refreshing my soul and giving me something else to think about. There is a, there's a nice poet, poet uh, poem, and this is poet saying about this very, very true, trying to answer who can answer the, the mystery of growth. Here, here's how it goes. Flower in the granite wall. I pluck you out on the crannies, off the crannies. Hold you here, root and all, in my hand. Little flower. But if I could understand what you are, root and all, and in all and all, I should know what God and man is. But you really can't explain how growth happens. So that is exactly what we see in the life of the church or in your spiritual life. In this parable of the mustard seed, Jesus says that the kingdom of God is like a seed, mustard seed. This seed that is the least of all the seeds, very small. But it contains power and divine uh, vitality that you cannot see. The inherent, inherent forces of a life that can fasten its own self. That's mystery. You can't see it, but you know it's there, it's growing. This parable to me is the, one of the most simplest parables in the Bible. When it's, a, it's a presentation of, of a seed that is smallest of all seeds. But it con contains to me and to us this morning the most profound message. I hope it does. And the message is this. 
no one, no one can predict how big something will grow. You can't. We need to believe that the seed we are sowing, the words we are preaching, the, the Bible we read, the prayers we say, the testimonies we share, the acts of love we do in faith, they contain power and divine vitality. And it will grow. It will grow. It will grow. Even you can see it. No wonder Bible says that we should never despise a day of little things. There's lots of little things in the church. Children are little things. Sometimes very much under, underestimating the life of the church. Remember, even in Jesus' services, disciples were serving as ushers there, and they wanted to escort kids out so that we can listen to what Jesus says. And Jesus brought them back. Come on, guys. Can't do that. They are little things, but they grow, and before too long, they are leaders of the church, leaders of the nation, leaders of the company, and whatever they do, they are doing because they grew up and they are capable of doing that. God has a way of multiplying our small endeavors and giving us tremendous results. We got to believe in that. We got to believe in that, that the seed we sow called church and within our church contains that power and vitality that it grows, no matter and despite what we think about it. The second thing here is that the kingdom of God belongs to God. The kingdom belongs to God. I hope I don't disappoint you that the kingdom doesn't belong to you. And the church doesn't belong to you. It doesn't belong to me either. The Methodist church doesn't belong to or conference of the bishop or pastor or you, whatever you are doing. It doesn't. The kingdom belongs to God. We better get clear with this. We get hazy sometimes with this. Your ministry belongs to you or my ministry belongs to me. And we start acting as it was true, but it is not true. Our services are important. Sometimes I wonder how come God wants us to serve because he would do a much better job by himself? But it is his plan to help us to, to grow his kingdom. Our Wesleyan tradition says that we are cooperating with the Holy Spirit. We are co-workers for the Holy Spirit for a reason or two. Years ago, a young man, preacher, was called to serve, was appointed to serve in the, in the little church at that time in a rapidly expanding area of the city, big city. In talking to an older minister, experienced minister, a retired minister, this young preacher said that the, the us, awesomeness and responsibility of this ministry frightens him. He's scared. At the same time, excited to see all these opportunities before him. But he's struggling with it. Then seeing the need for the ministry, and all this overwhelms, overwhelms him. Then he says, I pray that I can be big enough for the task, and I wonder if I am. And the older minister said, to younger one, let me share a verse, let me share a verse of the scripture with you. And then he read from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 12, 32, that says, Fear not, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. And then the younger minister realized that God was more, far more interested about that ministry than he was or any other ministers was. Lord's work goes on and moves on. 
And this very word has encouraged the pastor and assur giving his assurance that has remained it with him through his years, through all the years. And the young minister at that time is the one who is preaching to you today. God's kingdom did not begin in the New Testament days. God had a people in the Old Testament, as we hear this morning. There were people, listen to this, who allowed him to rule in their hearts, who allowed God to rule in their hearts. In a very special way, the kingdom of God came into being when Jesus was born. And Jesus revealed the Father in all his fullness. So we are to remember this, never forgetting it, when we are going through a discouraging time in the church or in your personal life. We need to remember who is standing at the window of heaven and looking right at you and saying, I'm keeping watch above my own, including you. That is a great confidence and comfort to us. Now, <clears throat> if anything ever began something small in miniature, it was Christian church. It was this church as well, some hundred, good hundred years ago, 120 years ago. When the church got started, the Bible tells that there's a little baby in a manger there's a Roman ruler issuing an edict to kill him. A little boy grew up in a carpenter's shop in a small village called Nazareth. If you have visited that town even today, there's not much there. But this was the start of all. Yet from that small beginning, God's kingdom based on love and righteousness and and, and grace has extended and become worldwide in its scope. Even here in Berea, Kentucky. And God's kingdom is growing. Why? Because you and I know. Because of the seed. The seed is right. Berea Church and friends who are worshiping at home, if and when our seed is right, it will grow. It will grow. Anything you do in the name of Jesus, it will grow. It don't matter how small you are, how weak you are, how scared you are, how uncertain you are, but if you are dealing with right seed, it will grow. Try it if you don't believe me. Try it. Jesus used the mustard seed as an example because he said, it is the least of all seeds. It can't be much. You may feel sometimes that you are the least of all disciples. You are the weakest member of this church, or you are the weakest part in the chain. You may not be, but this is, you may, this is how you may feel about yourself. It don't matter. But if you are sowing right seed, if you are doing right things, you are sowing God's seed, it will grow stronger and stronger, and you will grow along with that. So, an important lesson comes to us this morning as we think of how God's kingdom has expanded. And the lesson of this is this those who attach themselves to Jesus Christ will grow. My friend, this morning, if you are with Jesus, you will grow. You go through some growing pains, but you grow. You grow through rainy and sunny seasons and dry seasons, but if, if you stick with Jesus, you grow. You become stronger and stronger and stronger before too long, you realize you are helping others to grow along with you. I have seen it many times in the life of the church. Many times a person who had a flat personality, excuse me for the word, using the word, 
suddenly grow into an individual with a great personality and charisma. You would never believe it. I have seen it thousands of times in the church. I told this morning the early service about the ministry we had back in Helsinki. We, we started Friday night. I was pastoring the Helsinki First United Methodist. And that is very classic Methodist church. Very classic. Dear church to me, but very classic. Some of you might call it high church. Very classic Methodist church. Now, it needed something. It needed something. People told me as I was walking out from the church that, oh, you are the pastor of that huge, big church. I said, yeah, if you are referring to building, I am. But there is not much pastoring in the building. You have to take care of the building. There is the people you are pastor. Am I right? When Bishop appointed me here, he said something this and that. And I said, I would rather be pastoring people than big buildings. This walls doesn't change much. You have to put paint on it and take care of them. But they don't inherit it internal life. But we do if we follow Christ. In the church, we started Friday Night for Christ program. It was outreach, evangelism, mission program in the right in downtown of Helsinki where the church is located. It was cross-denominational because we didn't have resources to do it all on all alone, by ourselves, all alone. So we have neighboring churches become, became a strong ministry right in downtown of Helsinki. No wonder we start getting some pretty interesting individuals attending our church coming in. When you go Friday night out, we have a prayer, had a prayer meeting 6 p.m. We pray and we, we sing and we encourage one another and then we go on the streets in downtown of Helsinki talking to people and inviting them to come to church Friday night at 10 p.m. That was the service. Then lots of sandwiches and hot tea and you name it, and then worship service. That is interesting thing, Friday night. But then we start some people coming from that Friday night service, coming to Sunday morning services, one at a time, coming to Sunday morning services, service. Still very interesting things. Some of them were not ready to go right away to Sunday school. But there were people that God loves. And they have chosen to follow Christ, and they, were, they, have, they have been touched by that powerful seed of God that transforms people. And though, so one Sunday morning after one of these guys had been pretty loud in the service, but true sermon, true follower of Jesus. And I had seen his life already change a lot. But it bothered some church members, some prominent church members. So after service, there is a, all, there's a delegate coming to me. And they have a question to ask. The pastor, are you planning to take these people into a church member to become a church members? Are you planning on doing that? I said, I think we should take everyone who God has chosen. If they believe in Christ and they've been baptized or we baptize them, we take them to church. Am I right? Okay, we are not ready for that. We've been thinking about to go. If you do that, we go. I was going to say hallelujah on that, but anyway. Uh, <laughs> but I didn't. I said, why in the world you don't love these people that Jesus died for on the cross? What is wrong with you? But they were not possibly people that they, were feel, they feel comfortable inviting to go out for lunch with them. I agree with that. But I have seen them grow already so much. 
And then we have that Friday house or Friday home where we send most desperate ones, people from the street, homeless people and addicts and all that. And it was a wonderful program. And we see some, some big blessings there. There's a one guy who had lost his license. His driver's license was, he lost his license, how you say, he was, was suspended for life. So he had had so many DUIs and addicts and all that. So, and he was a young guy. So his li license was uh, suspended for life. And he gave his life to Jesus on the Friday night service. And he became a uh, bus driver for Helsinki Transportation Cabinet. <laughs> a couple of years afterwards, his picture was right in the first page of the Helsinki News, and saying the, uh, the friendliest bus driver we ever, and well, he was named the, the friendliest bus driver a year. Last time I met him, he was a supervisor. He was hiring bus drivers and providing training and all that. We find him and many other stories. There's mustard seed. If the seed is right, it grows. And we need to follow that growth. Friends, we need to be part of that growth that Christ provides. We need to be part of it. We need to, we need to be a true followers of Jesus Christ. Something to take home. Let us not forget that the truth the truth that the mustard seed is growing in our hearts. It is growing in your heart and it's growing in my heart. It is growing in the heart of this church. It is growing in the heart of this congregation called Berea United Methodist Church. It is growing. Do you believe it is growing? Say amen. It is growing. It is growing in the, because it is God's seed. It is growing. It will grow up, and one day it will be a big tree. It will, because it is God's seed. Big enough to keep cover and shade to some smaller ones, like your life. One day you were not ready to keep cover or shade to anybody. You barely made it here. But today you are serving and praying and ministering and doing many things. Same thing can happen to anybody if it happened to you. It don't matter how people look like outside. We need to watch that, that we don't pass judgments upon people who God loves and Christ died on the cross. We need to, we need to be very careful on that. And also we need to be careful not to take ownership about the church. We need to be very careful on that. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. If the ushers can come forward at this time, we continue our worship time by the ministry of giving. We have great ushers this morning, I'm telling you. Let us pray. Dear Lord Jesus, we thank you for the powerful seed you are sowing in the hearts of those who follow you, and your seed will grow. We thank you, Lord, for these seeds this morning, these love seeds that we can sow through the ministry of giving, that they can do powerful things in the life of people, in the life of this church, in the life of this community, in Christ's name. Amen.
Please stand if you can. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise here the creatures here below. Praise Him a young in heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Please be seated. We continue our time in prayer. And how many of you have a prayer concern in your heart and life for us to pray for? You, have, you want to say something about it? Maybe a word or two? Please. That's a praise, am I right? Yeah, good. Thank God for that. Yeah, we are so happy for you. Yeah, good. All right, well, if you have your bulletins, please turn them over. And the back of your bulletin, there's lots of names. Dear people for us to pray for. Mm -hmm. Some of them are your family members, some of them are your close friends, some of them are people that you have known for a long time. Then there are some people that we do not know. They are friends or family members to our, our friends and so forth. But we pray. I would like for us also to continue praying for our confirmation class. We are coming together again this afternoon. We have five Nice young people there attending the class, so please pray for them all. Uh, we are having wonderful, wonderful start for the confirmation. Also, let's pray for our Wednesday night program that we just started last Wednesday. We, have, we were having great start, so let's pray for all these programs. We want to pray for Preston, Evan, Mike, and Susan, and Barbara, and Bill. Jesus, hear our prayers for these dear people. Thank you, Lord, for your presence for them. Thank you, Jesus, that our prayers represent the seed, the mustard seed, this powerful, powerful seed of your word, of your blessing, of your healing. In Jesus' name, we ask in healing and strength. Everything and only Jesus you can provide. We pray for Karen and Susan, daughter of Jackie. We pray for Laura and her family at the loss of their lab family member. Oh, Jesus, Lord. Surround this family by your grace and love, by your comfort. Be with Karen and Susan as well as they are dealing with their illness. Be with uh, Jeanine at the loss of her mother who came to be with you, Lord, but there is grief and sorrow and, 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 and longing. Jesus, surround these people by your Holy Spirit. Give them your grace and give them your peace that surpasses their understanding. Lord, we continue praying for Margaret and Surrey and Dave, Edna and Chuck and Becky. Hear our prayers for Don and Jackie, mine, Wes and Evelyn and Betty, and people of Ukraine, hear our prayers, Jesus, Lord. Hear our prayers. Hear our prayers when we come to you and we are desperate. Hear our prayers when we come to you and we are in pain. Hear our prayers when we are unknown and we need guidance and direction. Hear our prayers, Lord. 
Hear our prayers when we are losing our faith, about to lose our faith. Remind us about your mustard seed and that we are rooted in you, Jesus. Dear Heavenly Father, clothe us with the power from high, from on high in all that we do for your kingdom and for the growth of your church. This we ask in the name of Jesus. This name of Jesus that is name above all names. We unite together as the body of Christ and pray for the building up of your church, Jesus. That the gates of hell will not prevail against it. We pray this from our heart in the powerful name of our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ, who rules, who is the King, and who has all the power. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. There's one praise. Is this Jean and Norman? What's up? You're being blessed. Mm -hmm. Well, thank God for that. Thank you, Jesus, for that. All right, thank you. Okay. So they didn't have transportation, but now they have. Am I right? Somebody else there? This must be good praise, am I right? <laughs> Thank you so much, and God bless you. We have it. I was hoping you'd be here today since we sang your favorite song, so I was glad to see that you were here. Victory in Jesus, right? All right. Let us please stand and sing, To God be the glory for the things he has done.
go back to our mission field, don't forget that there is mustard seed in your heart, in all that you do, in the name of Jesus. Go in peace in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.